Okay, so this video is going to be a follow-up on my previous video with my Explorer Scientific 10-inch Trust Tube Telescope. And uh, what I was able to do was to order some accessories for my telescope. Uh, we're going to review here shortly. And then also I was able to get a little bit of video footage of the moon. So it's my first time actually recording the moon. Uh, so I'll play that uh, at the end of this video. So for now, I just wanted to mention that uh, some of the accessories uh, on the Explorer Scientific were uh, functional, but I wanted to upgrade them. So we're going to go over a few of those accessories that I actually ordered online. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing I ordered was an Orion Illuminated Right Angle Finder Scope. So I believe there's a couple of models available uh, in this particular scope. Uh, this one is the Deluxe uh, 9x50 Finder Scope uh, with the enhanced uh, red illuminated crosshairs. So you have these illuminated uh, uh, crosshairs here. Uh, you can adjust the uh, brightness of those uh, crosshairs. Uh, so it's a pretty nice feature. So I opted, uh, there's a little bit more money. Um, I believe this unit was approximately $100. Uh, and the one without the illuminated Illuminated uh, crosshairs was I think like twenty dollars cheaper. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, one of the things that uh, interested me in this particular scope was that it has that uh, right angle eyepiece orientation, uh, which eliminates neck strain for comfortable telescope viewing. So that was uh, something that uh, I wanted, and that uh, uh, the particular uh, red dot that came with it. Uh, you pretty much have to hug the the housing of the telescope uh, just to look through that little uh, eye, eye that finder piece. One thing is is that I believe you can order it without the bracket. Uh, the bracket is what actually holds it in place. Um, so uh, make sure if you order it that it comes with the bracket, um, and then the bracket, and then you have a, a particular or a specific mount uh, that you have to have that fits with uh, the Orion. Um, shoe there so uh so you make sure you get that's a little piece in the back I'll, I'll post a picture of it on here um so i had to get that uh then i had to attach that to the housing of the where the secondary mirror uh, sits on uh, or the previous uh, uh spotting scope went um so uh so yes uh, very very happy with this uh, uh this spotter scope here so just a few uh, accessories here. Uh, I ordered a uh, laser culminator. Uh, this helps uh, with uh, culminating your telescope. Uh, there's plenty of videos online that shows you how to use that. Uh, so I won't add that in this particular video. And then in addition, uh, the Explorer Scientific does come with a two times Barlow lens, uh, as you can see here on the right. Uh, but uh, the quality it was not as good as uh, I would like it to be. Uh, so what I did was I ordered a secondary one. Um, and, uh, and it's this one here. You can see it here on the left. Uh, and this one has a metal midsection, whereas uh, the one that comes with the Explorer Scientific is just a plastic one. Uh, but that one will do the job. But at the same time, I was looking for uh, just to upgrade... Uh, to a better quality uh, two times Barlow lens, um, since I'll probably be using it for planetary observation. Uh, and then I ordered a couple of filters. Uh, we have uh, uh, the, the Explorer Scientific does come with its own filter, uh, but I ordered, uh, like again, uh, like I said, I upgraded. I got a, um, a nicer moon filter, and then I got a UV filter. If you notice that one filter is a 1.25, uh, inches and the other one is actually two inches uh, and that's because uh, eventually I'm gonna upgrade all my eyepieces to two inch eyepieces uh, so that takes us to our next part of this video and we'll talk about the focuser here uh, you can see that uh, right now I have a 1.25 inch uh, eyepiece on uh, mounted on the focuser uh, but if you can take this apart, uh, you can see that there is an adapter here um, for the 1.25 inch. So you can remove this adapter here. Uh, and then uh, you notice here that uh, you can use two inch eyepieces. 
so my plans for this telescope, uh, I'll be using the two inch eyepieces when applicable. And then um, if I have to use a 1.25, I know that I have that adapter there. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, this Explorer Scientific Telescope comes with a, I believe it's a 1.3 uh, Bresser digital camera uh, that attaches to your eyepiece. Uh, I haven't used that yet, um, but uh, I do have a uh, Canon 70D uh, DSLR, uh, but I have to buy the adapter that will attach to uh, the focuser. And at first I wasn't uh, planning on doing really any astrophotography, any planetary photography, anything of that nature. Uh, but after taking this, uh, this beautiful telescope out and seeing some of the things that I've seen with it, uh, you know, oh, it's only natural that you want to document or actually record or show other people uh, what you're seeing. Uh, so what I what I did was I actually saw uh, a couple of good reviews on a uh, smartphone adapter, and basically what a smartphone adapter does is it adapts your cell phone uh, to your telescope. Uh, so I saw online I was looking for one, and I saw actually some good reviews from uh, Celestron. So they produce one called the Nex YZ, uh, which is I ordered. I think it was uh, is relatively inexpensive. I think I paid like fifty nine dollars for this one. Uh, so basically, it's a three-axis universal smartphone adapter, um, and it's compatible with any smartphone, even with the case on. So my phone has the secondary battery on it. Uh, it's a Samsung Note, uh, so it's a big phone. So all you would do to attach this uh, adapter to your telescope is that you clamp um, your the adapter to your eyepiece, uh, then you tighten that uh, eyepiece. Um, so that way it's clamped onto your uh, cell phone. And you can see here that it's up and down. Uh, so just note that if you record that way, whether a picture or video, you're going to get, um, you know, a picture from up and down. Um, but then it also has, uh, you can turn it uh, sideways, so that way you get a, uh, a left to right, a wide angle type picture. And... Um, so it's, uh, my phone is a kind of a bigger phone, a heavier phone. So there's a little tiny screws on there that you can adjust. Uh, so that way it keeps it, uh, tightened to your eyepiece. So you might, if you put your eyepiece on there, it's, it's kind of hanging down to the up and right position. Just know that you need to adjust those tiny screws on there. Uh, but, uh, you really want to familiarize yourself with this, uh, before you go out and observe, because you don't want to be fumbling in the dark. Uh, with little screws and tiny uh, screwdrivers and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's about uh, some of the upgrades I got. Um, but uh, as uh, I promised earlier in the beginning of this video, uh, I was able to record uh, with this uh, uh, NexYZ adapter. I was able to attach my phone to the eyepiece of my telescope and was able to get a little bit of uh, moon footage and... Uh, it, uh, you just have to remember that the quality is not going to be uh, that good because you're attaching a cell phone to an eyepiece. You know, I plan on uh, getting better video when I familiarize myself with my uh, Canon 70D uh, DSLR. So one of the, one of the downsides uh, of uh, trying to get uh, any pictures or video in your backyard is uh, light pollution. And you can see here that there, there's a tremendous amount of light pollution. I uh, got the lamp uh, street light right above uh, the house in the backyard here. Uh, so I took a picture of it and you can see that there's just a lot of light pollution here. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the video came out decent anyway. So uh, here's the here's the video footage. Enjoy. <laughs> 